Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Adras this. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my current Technomaster build for end game content. This build is pure DPS and can play with a little bit of survivability mixed in for soloing the Challenge Day 15 expeditions. So, without further ado, let's get it. First up, the skills I use Cryo Turret. This is used as a distraction and sometimes a run and heal. It also freezes enemies from short range and long range. Lighted rounds, the bread and butter of your build. This skill probably needs no introduction, but it inflicts poison onto an enemy and within a small radius of that enemy and also does 50% damage. It lasts until you reload, but with the damage and build I am about to show you, you pretty much never have to reload. Lighted turret. This skill with a certain class node in the class tree enhances your damage. It is mainly used to buff your weapon damage output, but it can also heal you a little and can provide a decent distraction for the enemies. An alternative to the cryo turret, cold snap. This skill freezes enemies in a large radius. The radius is larger than you think. This skill is mostly defensive and used in those panic moments if you're surrounded by enemies and need to get a jail free card. It could also be used offensively if you can catch a group of enemies before they spill out. In example, when a group of enemies just spawn. Moving on to the class tree, my build focuses on the assault rifle category, which is the pestilence tree, focused more on gunplay. I will only go over the main nodes that I use for this build, but I will mention four of the smaller ones, two that you can change around depending on preferences or how you play. If you follow my class tree exactly as it is, you will be left with one class point. This is where the two smaller nodes will be preference. So of the K, I think would be better suited to co-op play, due to teammates possibly getting the killing shot of an enemy, which will screw up our mod use for blighted rounds, which I will get into. The purge mod would be better suited for solo play, one extra 10% damage you get from using blighted rounds, and ammo isn't an issue as you are solo and will always be getting the killing shot. The other two nodes are the nitrogen capsule nodes, decreasing the distance considered to be long range by 3 meters. Dropping the distance to 12 meters from the base, 18 meters. Now for the major nodes. The first being the exposing toxic node. Every time toxic is afflicted on an enemy, vulnerable is also inflicted as well. People can fly a recently nerfed their vulnerability from 25% to 15%. But exposing toxin coupled with mark or execution, vulnerable is 40% more effective, giving you 21% more damage on an enemy inflicted with toxic, which blighted rounds and your blighted turret will be doing. Assault Master Increased assault weapon damage is the main take from this node as you will be using an assault rifle pretty much 100% of the time. The extra 20% chance of an assault weapon dropping is useful if you don't already have your perfect or god world assault rifle. Two sides of the power Do 20% more damage and take 15% more damage. This makes you pretty much a glass cannon, but as you will mainly be shooting from a distance, it shouldn't be an issue. UT14 clips. Increase magazine size by 50%. Even more uptime for blighted rounds or 50% more bullet damage before needing to reload. Grand Amplification. This node is for a specific mod that will be used on a weapon, which I will get into later. Empowering Antenna. Activating blighted rounds or blighted turret increases your weapon damage by 40%. For you and your allies for 10 seconds. This is where your blighted turret comes into play. The blighted turret has a cooldown of 7 seconds. So if you are on a ball with throwing out your blighted turret, you get 40% more damage at 100% uptime. Now for the weapon, armor and mods. The weapon is an assault rifle tactical variant. For some reason, tactical variants of assault rifles output so much more damage than any other variant. If you have the pre-order bonus items, the Earthbomb Renegade's Assault Rifle is already set up for you pretty much. All you need to do is level it and upgrade it. Add the Killing Spree mod if you have it and you're set. If you don't have the pre-order bonus items, the main attributes you will be looking for are Crit Damage. Of course, this is the main source of high damage output. As you are a Technomancer, in most cases, you should be hanging back and dealing damage. So long range damage is a given. Sometimes, the enemies are just in your face, so close range damage is also a good attribute to have. 
For the mods, Killing Spree. Killing shots increase damage by 25% for this weapon for 20 seconds. It stacks up to 3 times, giving you a damage bonus of 75%. There are always plenty of riflemen and peripherals to kill, and they usually die in one hit, which will give you that 75% bonus to focus on the elites or boss. Anomaly Enhancement This is where the Grand Amplification node on the class tree comes into play. The extra 4% Anomaly power for each weapon damage node works together with this mod. Higher Anomaly power means higher firepower, as you get a firepower boost from 30% of your Anomaly power. Bone Shrapnel If you are using the pre-order bonus weapon, Bone Shrapnel comes as a mod already. This mod does 200k damage after killing shot in a small radius and applies bleed. Good for low tier enemies. Moving on to the armor mods and attributes. For attributes, your god rolls would be bonus firepower, long range damage, and close range damage. Alternatively, bonus firepower, long range damage, and cooldown reduction or status power. Cooldown reduction for quad play and status power for better freezing with cold snap. Cooldown reduction also will help with cold snap, so you can use it more if need be. Now for the mods. Of course, Blighted Rounds will be the first mention. Critical Analysis increase critical damage by 15%. Spare Mag gives you an extra magazine before triggering cooldown. Trick up the sleeve. Killing enemies inflicted with toxic replenishes 30% of your ammo into the magazine. An alternative or better variant would be Toxic Lead. Killing enemies inflicted with toxic restores 40% of your ammo back. You can even go with both, giving you pretty much all your ammo back. The damage ones you should be looking for are Captain Hunter. This increases your damage to at least by 25%. Perseverance, Munitions. Every time your health drops below 30%, you gain an increase to your firepower by X amount. This depends on the level of your gear for 5 seconds. Crit Stack. Critical shots boost your anomaly power and firepower by X amount, which stacks up to 5 times which again, also boosts the Anomaly Enhancement on your weapon. Blood Loss Killing shots increase your firepower by X amount and stacks up to 3 times. Stand Tall Receive an Anomaly Power Boost and Firepower Boost when out of cover for 5 seconds. This is more a situational kind of mod to use. If fighting beasts, you will mainly be out of cover. But if fighting human based enemies, then you will be using cover a bit more. And the opposite to this mod is the Hidden and Dangerous. Increases firepower by X amount when shooting from cover. But instead of giving you anomaly power, it gives you a raw firepower boost. Radical Therapy. Deal 15% more damage against enemies afflicted by toxic. Euthanizer. Deal 25% more damage against enemies inflicted by toxic. Finally, Thumb Down Bullets. Increases assault weapon damage by 10%. For defensive mods, mitigation from death, killing enemies while aiming down sights, grants you an X amount of armor for 10 seconds. Stacks up to 3 times. Damage absorber, flat increase to your armor by X amount and resistance by 10%. Emergency stance, gain a golem effect which protects you for 4 seconds when your health drops below 30%. This current mod is bugged and grants you the effect indefinitely, giving you 65% armor boost. My current setup is the pre order bonus assault rifle with bone strapnel and killing spree, the helmet, ice component, and euthanizer. I use ice component as enemies frozen are easier to hit in the head or weak point. The chest piece, Captain Hunter, and Perseverance munitions. The legs, Spare mag and crit stack. The gloves, toxic lead and dumb dumb bullets. The boots, blood loss and emergency stance. This is my current end game build. I still have lots to farm for and improve on which I am working on. Once I have obtained everything I need for the god DPS build, I will update with another video. I can solo pretty much all the expeditions on challenge tier 15. I'm going to be posting gameplay of me completing all 14 expeditions solo on challenge day 15 
So if you'd like to see that, please do leave a like, subscribe, and turn notifications on. Just do it! To support me and bring you more of these videos. Now I'll leave you, ladies and gents, with a gameplay of me doing the Drought Palace Expedition on Challenge Tier 15 with a gold rating. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. I does this. of obelisk mechanism here connected to the gate maybe if i activate it
Shanna, I found an oasis. It's something else. Almost like the anomaly never touched this spot. Shanna, I found a pod near the temple. Had to fight for it, but the contents are ours. Sorry, I couldn't get you any answers. I suspect those guardians could sense our presence and wanted to communicate with us. Perhaps they didn't want the sacrifice of the past to be forgotten. Or this was just my brain's screwed up way of leading us to the pod. Either way, 